The low hum of the air conditioner was the only thing filling the silence between the two of us. Botney arched her eyebrows in pain and put them with her hand as she suffered from the fever. I grabbed her hand and held it tight. It's okay, I'm here. I'll always be here for you. Maybe my words reached her in her dreams because her breath steadily grew calmer. I held up his hand with both of mine and could do nothing but wait for time to pass. Looks like I fell asleep. How did he fall asleep? The soft sensation of her hair brushing up against me brought me back to consciousness. What, did he share the bed? Or did he fall asleep on the floor? Maybe while kneeling? Or sitting down? Or what? Something small and rather fragile. A warm hand. This is... What, ne? <laughs> Hearing that voice, I suddenly got up. She calmly smiled as she asked me that. Maybe the medicine did the trick as she looked a lot better now. I'll probably end up with some muscle pain tomorrow in the arms or something. Hey, you're the one who said it was, uh, was hard to carry you. She puffed up her cheeks in protest once again. Well, come on, carrying a person is gotta be pretty tricky, isn't it? Regardless of their weight. If it, if it didn't cause them, they'd have to be incredibly light, you know? That facial expression really put me at ease. I mean, can you imagine being so light that you'd like a strong breeze would literally send you flying on your ass? That'd be a bit inconvenient, wouldn't it? You seem to be feeling better now. I'm real relieved. She looked at me shyly. It may have been because she was acting like that, but I found her to look really cute. Man, you really pushed yourself there all the way until you collapsed. Mm. Don't make me worry like that, you hear? Well, yeah, of course I was. <laughs> She looked really happy and laughed, just like, ha 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 I like it when you're worried. Just like, dick, move! Hey now, do you get off on making other people worry? I pretend to be angry and made a little frown. <laughs> she sure had quite a seductive face on with just the two of us here. Oh man. Oh well, I'm really not getting anywhere aware of this act. But it's pretty rough for you to catch a cold like that. Yeah, I mean, you're always managing to take care of everything yourself, so you don't get sick very often, do you? I actually couldn't remember a single time when she'd had a cold. Can't remember the last time I had a cold. And funny thing is, I think I might be coming down with a cold. Lately, I'd just be like, uh... Although, I don't know, could be a cold. I know part of it was the sunburn I had the other week, but that's kind of gone now and I'm just like, Ugh. That's why I was so worried. How have you been lately? Well, you see, you've been acting a bit weird since last night, so is there a problem or something? It's plot related. I told you yesterday I'll help you out if there's anything at all troubling you. I really don't think it's a ball or anything. Well, even if you ask me for help, I might not be able to do anything, but... But not even being able to try to do something before you overwork yourself is a bit painful. 
The classic response. I had a feeling she'd keep answering me like that. I kind of knew she'd want to endure it one more time. I really want to be of help to her. But just because she says that, I feel like I can't do anything. I really hate my own helplessness. That was almost a whisper. I looked at Otna's face. A request for me to grant? We both just looked at each other for a while. I nodded slightly. Then there was a moment of silence. And after taking a little riff, I could see Otney's pupils nervously darting around. Her voice was overflowing with emotion. She looked at me with a serious gaze in her eye, and even though she tried to look firm, I could tell that she was really anxious. I love you. I let Otney's words soak slowly into my memory. Please go out of me. I answer well, as if there was any doubt. Ever since the beginning, probably since I first laid eyes on her. Oh come on, you say that about all the girls, don't you, Yoshiyuki? That's the thing with visual novels, isn't it? Because you got all these different choices, it makes the protagonist just look like a complete ass, doesn't it? I've always been attracted to Otney. I love you too, Otney. I told her in the most honest words I could come up with. I'd never joke around at a time like this. Dotney just sat there for a while staring at my face. It seemed like she had totally run out of steam. Dotney? Uh, Dotney? Dotney? She said and pouted. Oh, I see, because he's still calling her Otney. I knew what she wanted me to say, but it felt so embarrassing. And it's like, because she's been referring to her all this time as Otney, it's like, referring her to her actual name even for me feels a bit awkward. Because we rarely refer to her as Otome, even when it's not any dialogue. I'm always referring to her as Otne, because that's what he always calls her. It's not that easy to just suddenly change the way you refer to someone. Indeed. She looked at me with great expectations. And she just kept looking. Oh, jeez. I'm really no match for her. Be she sister or lover. Seriously, with the whole... They're not biological siblings, but it still just feels awkward. I figured that I should make her happy. Uh, or Tommy. <laughs> but Ney suddenly started blushing. Well, he may be able to say that, but he still thinks the same way. Her face was so red that it looked like there'd be... Uh, there'd be steam coming from her. I think I've got a touch of this fever as well. If I could see myself in the mirror, I bet I'd be as red as a tomato. Well, you should get some sleep, so, uh... I tried to cover my face with my hands, but failed. A waste, um... It's just that uh, it'd be bad if I got you all worked up and your goal got worse or something. She sounded a bit childish when she said that. Once your goal gets better, we'll have a lot of time to spend together. She said and slowly closed her eyes. The look on her face said she trusted me completely. 
I slowly moved closer to Otney's face. I could feel her breath touching my lips. And then... Otney's body shivered the moment our lips met. It was just a slight touch of a kiss. But even so, my train of thoughts derailed completely. All I could think of was Otney's soft lips. Feeling a sense of slight regret, I moved my face away from her. She had a dreamy look on her face. I really don't mind as long as your it's your cold, Otome. <laughs> just, just, I don't mind if it's your cold. A cold's a cold, though. <laughs> okay, well, I'd better nurse you back to health as soon as possible, then. Otney laughed, looking truly happy. That smiling face of hers made my heart skip a few beats. I went, I went to protect that smile of hers. No matter what happens, I'm going to protect her smile. That was all I could think. All I could think of is that's going to be an emotional roller coaster, probably. Fabry snow and cherry petal fall, and Matt's third party content. The love story repeated on the island. This intro repeated on the island as well. I want to see if I can figure out the key for this. I couldn't figure it out. Or maybe I did and just didn't realize it. But I like when I can figure out the key of a song because then it's like, feels like I'm improving a bit on that and it's also kind of fun to actually kind of just like improvise over stuff. Just like the other day, like, most randomest thing, I think it was a song called Cloud Busting or something by Kate Bush. Quite a random song to <laughs> improvise over, but. I was just listening to that and just like, because it's quite a long song, just picked up my guitar randomly, it's like, uh, let's just improvise over it. Figured out the melody pretty easily, it's just like... Something like that. And I was just like, over like some part of it, it was just like soloing, just like... You know, it's kind of just fun to just play along to a song, just like, not actually playing the song itself, but just kind of improvising in the same key of the song. 
it makes kind of like gives a bit of variety to like figure out how to kind of like make it work with the melody things like that it's quite nice to do it's like playing along to a backing track except it's an actual song is this a dream it feels different from usual it's a bit weird there had to be something someone dreaming nearby since it was flowing into my mind and since uh, we are not a maze rat, it seems pretty obvious who would be then, wouldn't it? I didn't know whose dream it was, but sharing this dream gave me a mysterious feeling. It was a bustling car drive at school. They had posted the results from finals on the bulletin board. Second place again, huh? Looking at the first spot, it was the same as usual. I had become quite used to this scene. For one month I hadn't been absent even a day, I just kept studying from early morning until late at night. I never even skipped a single day of school. But, only five more points. I only noticed needed like one or two more answers right to push past that. However, it was no good. Next time I'll definitely pass was what I kept thinking. But wasn't there something wrong? We were the same age and the same class and the questions we got were definitely the same. Don't worry about it, you got second place, didn't you? One of my classmates tried to offer me some vapid consolation. Yeah, that guy is intelligence just on a different level than ours. People who just gave up would never understand my feelings. My, my, that kid definitely makes me proud of being his homeroom teacher. <laughs> of course you make me proud as well. Hearing more praise just pained my poor ears even more. Why does it have to be him? He doesn't take his study seriously and just goofs around in general. Is, is he really better than me? No way. There's just no fucking way! I don't think that's the actual translation, but... Yeah, it's just like... it's We gotta place what the emphasis on just like how much is just like... No, it just can't be, so it's like no fucking way. I'm completely sure I gave it all I got. So why can't I surpass him? Maybe there's been some mistake. Maybe they didn't count his marks properly. Maybe he managed to steal the questions before the test or something. No, oh, that's right. His entire existence is a mistake. If only he wasn't around. If only that asshole wasn't around, everything would be great. If I, if I could correct him, it would be so much better. Are you plotting to kill someone? Yes, if only that guy didn't exist. Suddenly, the wind swept the scenery away, and the cat wanted to leave the room. What was previously the school car door had suddenly changed into a road crossing. There's a lot of traffic. Maybe it's on the way to school? Cars were passing by in front of me at incredible speed. Suddenly, a familiar back caught my eye. He was waiting for the light to turn green, and the cars were passing by right in front of him. That's right. If I push him just a little bit... Hmm... Trying to piece together things here. But I don't think I'm right. I think that... The genius kid who goofs around might be Yoshiki, but I'm not entirely sure on that. If I do that, he'll finally be... There were a lot of people waiting for the green light. They're not paying attention to anyone else, so all they can think of is watching the traffic light. With this many people around, no one will be able to tell who pushed him, right? And even if I'm found out, they'll never be able to tell if I did it on purpose. I should just pretend like I bumped into him. I swallowed, took a deep breath, and proceeded straight for the back of the unsuspecting person. And at that very moment, someone grabbed my hand. Who the hell? As I fought that and turned around, our eyes met. Streaming long hair and a fluttering ribbon. God damn it! Cliffhanger! In the morning stillness, the sound of the alarm clock seemed incredibly loud. Man, waking up today is just the worst. Today was the first day of the new school term. That was a pretty bad dream. I wiped the sweat from my neck and let out a big yawn. Surprising so much and no refuge from all that hate. They wanted to just push that person down and beat the crap out of them. Push that person down and beat the crap out of them? He's pushing them into the road. The scenes from people's dreams aren't just pretty things. 
probably because they're the embodiment of their innermost desires. The desire to aim high can often turn into a wanting to be better than someone else. When that desire gets wrapped and turns into a blade in your heart, it not only hurts the person you're after, but also yourself. I really hope that desire to kill doesn't go beyond their dreams. I took a look at the grey skies outside, scratched myself for a bit, and then got out of bed and stretched my body. Alright, at the end of that dream, someone held that person's hand. I wonder who that was. Well, it sounded pretty obvious that I must have been... Wait. Actually... A moment. Huh. I thought for a second, maybe it was Otne, but... It could also be Sakura. I definitely know that it's gotta be a character of importance. I mean, it must be, surely. Wait. What if... This is just a guess and don't, like, uh... Point out whether I'm right or not, because that would spoil it uh, if this theory is correct. But what if, in the dream... The one who was like, why is that asshole getting all the good grades and all that? He doesn't even study. What if that person the whole time was Otne? Although, I'm not entirely sure because uh, I think it was, it put it, said he as a boy. Or well, maybe that was a different character or whatever. Maybe Yoshiki is the kid that gets good grades, but... Uh, Goofs around and Otome is the one who just like focuses on getting good grades and at first loathed him or something like that and uh, I don't know I still find it a bit confusing but that that's what I my mind is trying to come to a conclusion to it and maybe just piecing that together and Sakura stopped her or something and uh, yeah trying to figure this out instead of just letting the plot you know outright just tell me just makes it confusing but it's a theory. I finished eating my breakfast, left the house, and happened to do so right at the exact time as when Otne left hers. <laughs> Usually she'd always go a Totokun, good morning, and smile at me, but Otne was acting a bit differently today. Oh, 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 what's up, Otne? Your face is all red. <laughs> Actually, it looks more like it's going to snow. Really? You're not getting sick or anything, are you? Just make sure you don't overwork yourself and pass out at school. I was really worried about you back then. Otne turned bright red and looked down at the ground. It looked like she was trying to say something. Well, don't just stop in the middle of a sentence. Now I'm curious, you know. That depends on what it is. Okay, okay, I won't laugh. Really, I promise I won't laugh. No, really, it does depend on what she's going to say. She half mumbled that as she started blushing even more. <laughs> Without thinking, I laughed at what she'd said. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just because you said something that girly. So let's like picture the guy version of it then, just like, uh. I think it'd be like a princess just like trying to think of like I don't know just think of some embarrassing kind of thing you could say 
about her being a princess. Well, they puffed up her cheeks and started running away from me. Ah, hey, wait up, Botney, I'm sorry! Please forgive me! 